Shalom, shalom. February 27, 2022. This is part two. This is my Babylon review. Reviewing the events of Babylon. Things that I see that's coming about before we get to Passover. Okay. Passover is in April this year. Um, uh, we have a few things here in the daughter of Babylon that needs to be done. And, and this is a problem. You have to get the nomination of the Supreme Court. You have to get the Fed board members. We don't have, there's no Fed board president. Powell, Jerome Powell is, 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 is acting in, in, <laughs> he's in, uh, intermediate capacity. He's not really confirmed yet. Okay. So that tells me something is going on at the Federal Reserve that we need to watch because they have no one controlling. They have no board members. They have a bunch of board members that are controlling. So um, because there was so much fraud that they was caught in uh, in the trading scheme that they had going on. So we know that the Federal Reserve is uh, being removed or being controlled. Okay, We don't know who's going to be put in here next, but whoever he, whoever is next. Is going to be pushing for the mark of the beast. We have to watch wheat, okay? Um, once wheat go up to fifty-five dollars a bushel, we already know that the dollar is no longer. And I'm thinking that's going to happen after the board members of the Fed come in, okay? After they, after um Joe Biden picks the board members of the Fed, they're going to make their play. If their play is to, uh, I won't say spook the markets, but start raising interest rates, and you see the stock market uh, tank, and they start flooding the, um, flooding the repo market with currency, and they're trying to prop it up, keep it up, um, keep the dollar up, we definitely know that uh, a, a day's wage will buy you a bushel of wheat, okay? $100 will buy you a bushel of wheat, which will make you 90 loaves of bread. Um, If we do the math, uh, let me see. Uh, excuse me. If we do the math, right, let's say, and that's a low number. I, I shouldn't say 590. If we do the math, this would be, should be, it should be uh, up to one seventy five. That's one hundred seventy five dollars for a bushel of wheat. Ninety loaves. That should come out to about two dollars and forty cent. Uh, two dollars and forty cent for a loaf of bread. Okay, but but the problem is. This is a rebalancing act to rebalance the dollar, okay? That means we're going into hyperinflation, but they got it under control. They have it under control because they had a balance, a just weight in a balanced scale, okay? So that comes out to about $2.40. It really comes out to like $1.64. But after you add the tax and a uh, few surcharge and all that other stuff, before it gets to you, once they get on the market, it'll be about two dollars and forty cents, something like that, even up to three dollars and forty cents for a loaf of bread. Which is, we're we're paying that right now. We're paying that right now. The problem is it hasn't been balanced out where it hasn't been it hasn't been debased where the time right that it takes for you to accumulate a day's wage, okay? Hasn't equal a three dollars a three dollar loaf of bread. Meaning you're gonna work work all day and that's all you can afford is three dollars is a loaf of bread. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. Like you'll work a whole day only to be able to afford a loaf of bread. Okay, because right now you can afford a loaf of bread plus more. So uh, we do the math on that. Let's see. Let's just say the average price, because I gave you a range from fifty-five to one hundred seventy-five. Because some people make twenty-two dollars an hour, um, and on the low end they make seven twenty-five. Okay, 
So let's say $15 minus, let's say the max for good quality of bread, $3.40. That's $11 difference, okay? <laughs> That's $11 difference for a loaf of bread. So right now, right now your dollar is able to purchase $11 more eleven dollars more of goods okay once that is removed your dollar your your 20 will not be able to purchase more than three dollars and forty cents okay if that makes any sense to you um military moves we need to look at the military moves that they pushed out in Ukraine now this was I Listen, I, I side with the way I, you know, I know people don't like like Trump or whatever, but this was a genius move. I mean, Putin really thought about how he was going to do this. You know, he really thought about how he was going to do this because he went in there slow. He didn't go in there and start bombing everything like the United States likes to do. Bomb everybody, bomb everything, killing, you know, just killing a whole field of people. He didn't do that. You know, he went in there slow, took his time, and he knew that. Uh, other nations wouldn't bring in ground forces. But the problem is Germany is pushing. Now, if Germany is ready to push, that tells me that they're ready to come in flank with uh, with Russia. But they're also talking about having a um, sit down at Belarus. And we're going to see if this is just a stalling tactic until Germany can get itself in position to come and retaliate. Turkey is also siding with the European Union. If Turkey gets in here, Turkey is going to be devastated. Now, before I said Turkey will go and take over Constantinople, that was a generalization. What I really should have said was the army of Corazon and the Muslim army will go and take Constantinople. Okay? And when they take Constantinople, they will, will return Hagia Sophia back to uh, the Ummah or the community of Yahshua HaMashiach, back to what we call today Christians. They will return that back to them, okay? Because Erdogan, uh, I think it was like three years ago, Erdogan, he turned that back into a mosque. It was a museum. He came in, he turned it back into a mosque, which he wasn't supposed to do that anyway. Now it's going to be turned back into uh, um, uh, a church, like it's supposed to uh, have been all along. Okay, that's coming here soon. Um, they want to draft over there 18 to 60 year olds to go and fight for their nation. Listen, <laughs> I don't think they're ready to go and be fighting with some Molotov cocktails. Though it can be done. Look, look, the Most High can bless any nation that is living righteously to be able to defeat their enemies. Okay. Like I said, we're in the seven-year tribulation, 2024. We also have to look for the sign of the Son of Man in 2024. Um, the sign, the uh, sign that's going to appear again in 2024. We need to look for that. Um, the biggest thing is the Roman Catholic Church siding with Germany. Okay, that's our biggest issue that we have coming along because this will bring back. The mark of the beast. Okay, if you don't know Germ German history, and if you don't see, haven't seen, haven't seen it playing out, most people have on their license a star. You should look that up. German history, the star. Okay. All right. They didn't use. They didn't use. Um, Solomon's star. I mean, they, this time they didn't use Solomon's star. During Germany, they used, uh, I mean, during this time, they used the Kenta star, the, the star of um, Satan, or the Baphomet star. That's what they used. That's what they used this time. But in Germany, they used the, uh, they used the star of Solomon, or the seal of Solomon, which represents male and female energy, or what we call light and darkness but that's for another lesson another time 
Shalom. I'll see you in the next video.